Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of The Real Heroes Show. You got Corey, Nick, and Shane with you here in today's video. And uh, the first two episodes of the bold new sci-fi series Foundation have debuted on Apple TV+. Plus. Uh, it's an adaptation of a book series from the great Isaac Asimov. Uh, we are going to try our best to cover it. We may not do a great job of it because <laughs> there is a lot to talk about. Um, we're going to talk about these first two episodes in full. Uh, there will be major spoilers for what happens in them so if you haven't checked it out please go over to apple tv plus watch those two episodes which will take you about two and a half hours to do so uh come on back here and see us uh nick i feel like we just spoke but how are you i am doing well i'm a bit more um uh feeling feeling a little bit uh, spicy this this time because i uh, have grabbed a you have an, an oktoberfest with you. an oktoberfest yeah that's good sam adams uh they're they're from new england which Havid is also hey Havid. If you notice, we're all we're all wearing the same clothes as yesterday's video. Look at that! Look at that <laughs> fact and Shocking. connection. What happened? Yeah. Amazing. Uh, we haven't showered yet either, so it's, yeah. <laughs> it's a it's not it's not good. Uh, yeah, it's a good thing we're all Stings not the seeing nostrils. people and working from home. Uh, Shane, your sunburn has not gotten any better in the last thirty minutes. <laughs> what happened? The, the Ted Lasso review could not solve my sunburn. <laughs> you know, here, here we all thought that Ted Lasso was the solution to everyone's problems. But, yeah. Um, all right. So, Shane, do you want to maybe explain to the audience a little bit about Foundation and what it is and what the TV show is and isn't compared to the books? Yeah. So I'll preface this by saying none of us on this show have read the books. I can't read. Um, we we are <laughs> approaching this show as non-book readers. So if you're looking for something that is book reader heavy. This is not the channel for you. However, we're going to discuss this more cinematically as a show. Um, but what I do know about the books, I'll, I'll kind of preface this as we discuss the show, um, is that for a long time, they've been considered unfilmable. I, I mean, as, as, as highly renowned as this book series is, right. um, it spans thousands of years. Uh, it is told much like an anthology and series of short stories almost. Um, and it's not really a set for TV or motion picture narrative. Right. So right off the bat, changes were going to have to be made to this book to, to make it into a show that people would be interested in watching every week, or at least a modern audience. Uh, I, they could have probably just made a straight adaptation of the books, but I don't think it would be as popular. Uh, so I understand the approach that they did. Mm -hmm. um, the showrunner cleared much of these changes with the Isaac Asimov estate. Oh, cool. Uh, spoke with, cool. Uh, yeah. So, and they were all in favor. A couple big ones that are probably controversial are like uh, most of the main characters that are female were male in the books. Okay. Um, he mentioned that in the novels, there were not a lot of female characters that had any speaking parts. So he made changes so that it'd be a more diverse cast. And this is cool. a very diverse cast, yeah. um, both yeah. gender and ethnicity, yeah. um, which I, I found is really, really cool because sci-fi is like a big proponent of diversity just in general as a yeah. genre. So it's good to see that. Um, For sure. Uh, some other changes are, are, I think, a little bit more narratively, like they're focusing on things that are not in the books. I don't think the space elevator was in the books or that event. Um, and they're trying to, to build up some mystery and tension that you get in a typical TV show that would right. not be present in this series. So I expect it to be a little bit controversial if people are huge into the books and want a straight, faithful adaptation to what those books are. However, I think a lot of people are going to find a lot to like in this series. I loved the first two episodes. I can't wait to see what happens next. Uh, we'll talk about what we liked in each of them, but it's a good little like set the stage for what the show is. Yeah, for sure, man. I, I think that's uh, it is really good that they're making it very clear that yes, that this is an adaptation of the book, but it's not a direct adaptation. Uh, and they're they're kind of just checking all those boxes <laughs> before the show even starts. Uh, that being said, it's not going to be like a mini series where it's like one and done. Uh, David Esquire, who is the head writer and executive producer, said that if Apple will have him. He wants to do eight seasons of this show. So yeah. it is going to be, if Damn. it's seen through, the, I know, if it's seen through the way they want it to be, it's going to be a sprawling epic. I think he even said in an interview, he kind of wants this to be the next Game of Thrones level 
show and uh, obviously and we can we can talk about budget and the sets and the costumes and all that in a little bit it, it really does seem like they're like they're aiming for that yeah. uh i just like you shane i really liked these first two episodes i feel yeah. like if they might not be everybody's cup of tea but if you watched those two episodes and you weren't at least a little bit intrigued as to where the remaining eight are gonna go i don't think i can help you right. <laughs> like yeah especially after the second episode there was some yes. really cool stuff that happened in there um so story-wise let's just talk about the, these two episodes as a whole we're not going to dissect each one individually so um nick what what were your thoughts uh in two minutes or less <laughs> on these first two episodes i know that's a big good, that's good a, luck that's a tough <laughs> ask but uh what, what were your thoughts yeah i try to take some notes just to along the way but i i you know sometimes it's like note taking can kind of uh, take away from from taking it all in, especially with a brand new show and unbeknown to the the books, uh, with my with my knowledge or lack thereof, uh, I, I I didn't really take a lot of notes. However, what I did uh, type down on um, my uh, new iPhone and 13 Pro Max hey. in Sierra Blue, baby, um, like I I just love this the scope of of this show. Yeah. And, like it, it's monstrous. Um, I mean, just the space bridge alone, I was like, what the fuck <laughs> yeah. and i'm like it's like, it takes 14 hours to get down like yeah. what space is big that's like driving from <laughs> from from miami to new york or something like that like it's just uh maybe not as far but um i just some of the the concepts of of time and space travel like suppose like supposed to be sleeping through it and you know and gail wasn't asleep and what did it mean because it looked like some weird creature was like like injected something into her. I'm like, the hell was that? So I have a lot of questions as to some of the, the mysteries of this, but I mean, I, uh, <laughs> I had to write this down though. And, um, I'm kind of jumping ahead, bro, but when, um, is it, um, rake, right? Reich, Rach, uh, Rach, Rach, yeah. Rach. Um, he kills, he kills a uh, Harry. Right. And then, uh, rips something up behind his ear, tells Gail, you got to get the hell out of there, puts you in a, a escape pod and jettisons her into space to an asteroid field um and i was like <laughs> what are the odds she makes it through an asteroid field i'll tell you the odds <laughs> 3720 to one never tell me the odds Punch Hi, it, Chewy. We're out. <laughs> <laughs> oh man like it's just there's, there's i i see a lot of like star wars in this just some just like the the tropes and um uh, and many other things too but uh like I think one of my favorite scenes, uh, although very very violent, it did remind me of um, uh, uh, Kotor one, where the planet, uh, what the planet is being um, basically bombarded, you know, <laughs> yeah. um, and uh, it, at the same time there's a public execution that's that's taking place, and it's being done from the Empire. Pretty sure the last time we saw an Empire in a sci-fi movie, they kind of you know screwed everything up and made it really really horrible for a lot of people. Um, and I thought the other interesting line, um, uh, I think it was in the first uh, episode where um, I forget who says it to, but um, it might have been uh, Gale actually that says, "Man, the Empire can build." And I was like, "Yeah, we see that <laughs> in uh, Star Wars yep. um, abundantly because they build everything large and repeatedly." So uh, it's sort of carried over. Um, again, I don't know if that's something you know Isaac Asimov really thought about, but just something that we take away from this TV show and the movies and stuff like that we've seen from another you know sci-fi uh, epic like uh, Star Wars. But um, I, I'm I'm really looking forward to this show. Um, I am I'm in, in, in captured uh, after two episodes, and these episodes feel long, which I'm okay with. Oh yeah. Right? Um, but I'm like, how much time is left? I'm like, damn, I got a half hour still. Holy crap. Yeah. Well, and they yeah. are long episodes an hour yeah. and 13 minutes for the, for the first one. That's and with no commercials, mind you, like yeah. your average game of Thrones episode was like 54 or 55. This is tacking on another 20 minutes to that. So yeah, so it, definitely it, long. It, it feels good though, just to have everything. I, I love just the, I don't know, the, the dialogue is actually really really cool and clever um i like um cory you'll probably appreciate this but uh when they're they're talking about um terminus uh, is on the uh, periphery yeah of, um, <laughs> I, I like, gotta, hey, I gotta some some perfect jokes in there but um I, ironically when the star bridge uh collapses after a terrorist attack um i'm typing in my in my notes how many died from this 100 million to a billion and then he says 
hundred million dead. I was like, okay, well I got that right. <laughs> nice. <laughs> but yeah, I, uh, man, what a, what a, what a great show so far. I mean, eight seasons of this would be amazing. Yeah. The, that's, that's the idea. They, they say, uh, the other good thing though, about, about having eight seasons is that, uh, they can do better than game of Thrones because all the content is written. <laughs> it's, already, it's already done. <laughs> I'm here all night, baby. Let's go. I, so, I mean, <laughs> we can talk about game of Thrones comparisons all day, but that yeah. I saw so much game of Thrones in this. Oh yeah. Oh, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. I mean, you're starting it off with like a, like a conflict mystery, Yep. you know, who, who did it kind of thing, which game of Thrones does the exact same thing mm-hmm. um, with, you know, pushing Bran off the, the castle wall yep. spoilers. If anyone hasn't seen game of Thrones <laughs> by now, but uh, anyways, incest, you, you start with a, <laughs> you start with a mystery and that's kind of the, the main anchor um, you've got sort of different to, to game of Thrones. It, it seems less of an ensemble cast. It feels like, you know, this is, you know, a couple major characters, right. And um, we're going to focus on them. I kind of like that. Sci- sci-fi is very good at the hero's journey type of thing. And that's what Gail is. Um, you know, she comes from her planet of, if I'm understanding this correctly, her, her planet is like a religious planet and they don't like science. They're all in on their seers, I think is what yep, they're yeah. seer priests yep, and yeah. you know math is exiled they murdered people etc yeah. um but they call she her is heretic. like yeah she's yeah. super yeah, smart she gets the little gemstones <clears throat> removed and goes to work with harry selden who is played by jared harris um amazing phenomenally uh, jared <laughs> harris is so, so good. good so good. um which i i really hope he's still in the show oh, same <laughs> man same dude oh, like two episodes so i was like come on what? Just, please tell me jared harris is not gone after two episodes i, if, I don't think he, he is, is we can talk about that if he is dead though it's kind of like another game of thrones comparison with sean bean getting that's a good in the first that, season yeah, true. and then not true. coming back right great yeah. award-winning actor in it and all of a sudden yeah. like bye yeah. yeah i'm out two episodes have done but yeah, I mean, you've got the major mystery. You've got the the hero, the young female hero, which I guess could be compared to Arya, I guess. But um, it was also kind of gladiator esque. Like that's a lot of what I got out of it. Was you know he uh, Lee Pace is doing his best Joaquin Phoenix emperor <laughs> impression. It is so um, funny you say that. My girlfriend, yeah. while we were watching it, she was like, "Man, he looks a lot like Joaquin Phoenix in Gladiator," <laughs> and I was like. You know, you're right. He kind of it's, does. So what I find eyebrows. is more interesting about him, though, is whereas Joaquin Phoenix seems kind of like aloof and like, you know, he's just like obsessed with power. This guy is not. Mm-hmm. He's very calculated. He's very smart. He's meant to be like evil. But like, you know, that he's at least in his own weird, twisted way, trying to hold the galaxy together. Right. right. It, it right. doesn't feel like he's doing a power grab as much as it, as it is. This is what he feels like is necessary to keep order. Yeah. And I find that that's like even more impressive because like he's kind of funny. Like yeah. he's funny and like the most humor that you get out of this show is watching Lee Pace perform brilliantly in that role. Yeah. Um, yeah. He's uh, <laughs> I texted Corey though. Ironically, his name's um, Emperor Day. So, um, yeah, that's you can, you can refer to, oh. yeah, <laughs> so you can refer to, yeah, <laughs> refer to me as Emperor Day. Although I wouldn't be that cruel though. Um, you know, cause I would, yeah, that you wouldn't just... vaporize the guy cleaning your murals. No, I wouldn't. <laughs> like, Bro, I love that scene. Like shock. it was crazy. Yeah. I was like, Oh, so, you know, right off the bat, he means business. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, he is not to be trifled with. Um, but yes, can we talk about those murals though? pretty awesome the, the, the detail on it was great but i love that close that close in shot of like the, the paint or the dust or whatever that um uh emperor uh dusk is yeah, uh dusk. is using and um but when he falls off i think it's it's the way the camera angle is is shot it makes it seem like he's so far down and i'm like he he gets down i'm like it's like 10 feet, <laughs> ten, ten feet bro. <laughs> like i mean for him being old it probably hurt yeah. himself but like for you know for even the kid, if he felt that he, he'd probably be okay. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm like, it, I thought he was like 50 feet up. I'm like, damn, it's a, not a long fall at all. <laughs> um, and then he just, he kind of gets all tilted and just starts throwing shit everywhere. But yeah, I think it was, it was representative. I, so I think, uh, because of the cloning, they kind of know their lifespan kind of, 
And that, yeah. that's my assumption. So, yeah, uh, I and he that. sees his, I think he sees his genetics breaking down similarly to how the prior guy broke down and he knows he's like reaching the end of I his life, lifetime. Uh, so I think he's just really pissed. Which um, <laughs> I, like I he's, think... he's mad about mortality. I, I believe there was something about that in the um the next episode. The preview for the next the episode. Yeah. For next, yeah, the next yeah. episode this he, Friday. He will ascend or ascension or something. Yeah, which is yeah. an interesting way for them to put it. Yeah. Uh, which I think, Shane, that kind of ties into why uh, Lee Pace's character is not necessarily doing extreme power grabs is because he knows that his life is basically on a cycle. Yeah. And he's going to go at some point and become Brother Dusk. He's going to then ascend the the cycle will repeat itself however uh i don't know if you guys felt this way but i think the kid is going to be the clone that bucks the trend i i kind of agree yeah um i the the last line from whatever that robot character's name is in the (laughs) second episode where you know the kid asks her like how often do i choose this and she says every time every time yep and i think that might that might kind of hit and like they haven't had a moment like this that that has developed a, a young kid like that trauma early and it's like uh he says in that uh lee pace says in his monologue like you know everyone is affected they'll carry this wound in their hearts forever and i think the kid is affected and i think that's going to change how he develops over time they've been in peacetime for so long right. yeah. all of these emperors are the exact same um the different could actually be this kid i think that's a good good uh guess yeah and i think because you know obviously if if we're looking at the older one ascending in the next episode which is relatively early in a 10 episode season yeah what happens? You'll, you'll probably see a, a teenaged version of that character or whatever because I, I imagine they don't just go from being six years old to 30 years old they, right they probably grow right. and live a normal right. life right. Uh, it might be at an accelerated rate kind of similar to the clones in in star wars but um i think it will be very interesting and that that concept to me is like such I a sci-fi thing because it's, it's so like good. lee pace is talking to the kid like the kid is his son yep but in reality he's just talking to himself yep and then yeah. the kid looks up to him like a father but it, and then like the other one is like a weird grandpa that yep. is just like, all cranky and shit it's like the grandfather like yep you know, you get the oh grandfather, i think father father grandson comment. yeah like yeah. it's it's really 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 cool and really cool yeah lee pace's voice is so goddamn perfect oh he's what... he's awesome <sighs> I, I, like... I just hear thranduil from the hobbit but you know <laughs> i mean that's just me yeah. i i went into this show <laughs> expecting jared harris to be the performance that wowed me the most because it's jared harris sure and lee pace has been what i've been impressed with the most in the entire show not not the production value not not the you know storyline or anything lee pace is phenomenal in that role he is absolutely um i mean i think he's obviously had more screen time too but um just for the sake of um you know him being the i guess the antagonist um I don't, I don't know like i don't i was like i don't know if science I even is call the him antagonist that. um <laughs> so if science so you so can't it, math is, doesn't is take math, sides nick so is math the protagonist <laughs> um funny thing about i i mean interesting things about math though um while i'm not uh obviously i have a degree in english i'm not so much a math person but i respect math and i like that just like the like, like the statistics portion of it i would like i like that in college back in the day but um uh, you know, people lie, numbers don't. Math um, is never just numbers because it could be used as weapons, as they say. And I really found that to be fascinating because that's the whole concept of this, right? Like, yep. are you saying that the empire is doomed because of math? Yes. Yep. Unless, and I, but I like that speech of when they're on trial and, you know, Harry uh, is up there talking about, like, I'm talking about what we can do to preserve um what happens after it all and yeah. they're like well how long what's your expectancy and he's like a thousand years in the dark ages i'm like holy shit i was not expecting <laughs> and that's that the number. good scenario that's, that's <laughs> yeah that's the good that's the that's the good possibility you know um did y'all get a uh, chernobyl vibes from jared harris yes. being on a court Dude. stand <laughs> yeah. warning people about something i needed the little guy, cards this like guy this. figured out <laughs> this guy helped figured out chernobyl all right like the, can you factor in that like in your trial here like it was pretty bad here and the earth almost exploded 
Um, yeah. So, listen, he could save the universe. Come on. No, no. Dream bigger, I, as he says to Gale. I mean, <laughs> what, what's great about the first two episodes is not only is it like a cool mystery, um, the one thing I didn't like, I'll preface this right away, is I, I thought the romance was yeah. super forced. And it was. Out of oh, nowhere. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's like, all of a sudden, it's like episode two, and it's like, they're yeah. fucking, all right, yeah. cool, let's I go mean, with it. I get that you want the emotional core of the 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 show and it's possible that like he just didn't have enough time to to do that with the plot points moving the way that they were supposed to but like almost feels like that shouldn't have even happened unless it like really comes back in a big way later good for him 10 points to gryffindor he's dean (laughs) Dean, thomas from the harry potter films um yeah but uh what i wanted to say is like thematically it's so interesting watching this show and comparing it to current day, right? And that's the big thing about sci-fi in general is sci-fi has always been big on universal truths and universal conflicts and stuff like right. that. And so I couldn't help but like this this impending doom is like global warming, right? Like yeah. uh, that's it's such a direct comparison to the global warming discussion. And I find it super interesting because some people believe that, you know, we're already past the point of no return. And so- at this point, we're just softening the fall, as, as Harry Seldon would say in this episode. Yeah. Um, but I, I find it super interesting that, you know, this politics versus science is not something that, like, is new. Like, in this whole COVID age of, you know, politics versus science, uh, where it seems to be talked about all the time. And this, you know, series, is, this book series was written in 1940. Yep. And it's like, it's it's you know, history repeats itself. Uh, yeah. I find it super interesting and relevant. Yeah, I definitely think, you know, especially um, just in the, the like the technology fashion too, right? I mean, uh, obviously I'm not trying to um, shit on anyone's uh, in, like innovations uh, or, or anything like that. I mean, I think people like Elon Musk who are trying to be like, look, we need to expand. I'm trying to do this. Um, you know, and again, there are ways to, to, again, to soften the blow, but I think because the world and people are so different and so unique, that also prevents struggles, just like we see in the show here, we've got the different worlds and their, their uniqueness. Mm -hmm. And like, uh, that cyborg says like, um, you know, your people destroyed mine. Right. So it's like, she's the last cyborg. If I'm understanding that correctly. Something like that. Yeah. And so it's a little throwaway robot sympathy line too, that I caught yeah and again it's sort of like hey you were the last of this you know civilization here on earth before we destroyed you um which has happened throughout history uh you know and obviously that's sort of come to a a halt now in our current age but um it like again just the how to alleviate the the impending doom um of uh you know a very a big and cataclysmic event that could literally wipe you know human civilization off the face of the earth um you know leading to you know what kind of happened to the dinosaurs right um and it's it's very interesting because that's again like this i i feel like i really wish we were into space travel um and i think it's one of those things where i think we've we've hindered hindered ourselves uh as a civilization um and whether that become of politics or money or greed or power um, or the race to do it first, you know, is, is a, like there's, there's always like this sort of ulterior motive um, in place. And it's like kind of what happens in foundation here, at least from, from my understanding of these two episodes, like, you know, um, having, having these, the planets, having the empire, and then um, just trying to have peace in, <laughs> throughout the galaxy, which is kind of, Mm-hmm. You know, Star Wars reference mm-hmm. as well, um, that it always doesn't work out that way. Um, and it might last for a time, but what happens during that time frame and, and how long will it, will it last? And like these series of events that are, again, mathematically brought to us, you know, it's like, I know the whole global, global warming thing has been long talked about for decades now. And, you know, it's like that seven minute hand has gotten, is now the one minute hand. And it's like, so if that's what you're saying, and it's been 50 years, how much time do we actually have before, you know, the, the big, um, you know, snap happens and for, for foundation. That, sake, that happened in 2018 when Thanos arrived to Wakanda. That's okay. true. Yeah, yeah. that's, that's <laughs> that, very true. That so the big more snap. sci-fi. 
Um, we haven't seen the Infinity Stones here on Earth yet, thankfully. So we're uh, <laughs> our doom is not uh, yep. on the horizon. But yeah, I I I, I like the idea where um, Harry says it was ne it was never our the plan to um, uh, you know to fully get arrested, but to to be in exile, yep. you know, and to to get shipped off um, to Terminus. Uh, so that was, that is, was always his plan. Yeah, yes. but not himself. Right, but not not just him, but to have yes. Gale along uh, along with him, and like just the idea of of it being fifty thousand light years away. I mean, I like, find that I, super interesting. The the speeds of sh like slow ships and fast ships. So I yeah. I looked this up, and apparently the slow ships go faster than the speed of light. However, the jump warp drive jump drive technology is uh, exclusive to the Empire. So only they can use it. And so you see that happen when she leaves Synax, Syn I think is Synax. her name. Yeah. Or the planet's name. Yep. Uh, on that jump, what happens is that middle thing creates a black hole that envelops the entire ship and it push it through space. Dope. And, that's, and awesome. that's how they go through. Uh, I mean, they basically create a wormhole. Right. That, that effect in the CGI was oh, so good. So good. marvelous. Yes. I was like, what are they? Oh, uh, my God. I was half expecting like a Star Wars light speed type thing. Yeah. And then what I got was so much more uh, than that. It's, it reminds me <laughs> yeah. of Mass Effect a little bit. The ships with like okay. the middle relays. Yeah. Um, very. And there's a really cool shot when they come out of uh, warp and then the spinning thing like center, like frames the planet mm -hmm. at the end. Yep. You'll catch yeah. it like pans over and it's like, this is the planet rock. So cool, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I I think it's a it's a good set of inciting incidents. Mm -hmm. um, one thing I want to talk about is the ending of, of episode two, uh, where Raish kills Harry Selden. Yeah, um, yeah. This is like Dumbledore, right? Like he told him to kill him or stage his death because, like, I, I so I watched it twice. The after I watched it the first time, mm -hmm. that's what I thought immediately. And I went back to watch it, watch it again. And it's pretty clear. Like there's a lot of hints that something is yeah. up. So early on in the episode, he's like a little bit spooked that like, you know, the, um, the percentages are going down right. for like the success of the colony. And then there's this scene where he's like looking at his math and he's like all upset. Yeah. And then like there's the pills and stuff. So maybe he's sick, something like that. But I and also mentioned, wonder, go, go, ahead. Ahead. No, go ahead. I was going to say, um, I wonder if the whole, when they're, when they're eating and he kind of like talks like about his father, I, I felt like, I felt like I'm like, he, I don't think he would talk to him like that on a, on like a regular drop of the dime. I was like, yeah, I, right. I think there was an intention behind that. And, and yep. Raish was said like this is how you need to respond to me at that time yep. um yeah so so he mentions to gail um that he was never supposed to be on the ship mm. um that harry was not supposed to make the journey it was supposed to be exiled and it was supposed to be created but he wasn't supposed to go he figured i think that he would die um but he didn't die and the reason why is because he didn't foresee the space elevator incident right and the only reason why there was you know mercy is because they were preoccupied with the space elevator thing Right. Um, so he's put on the ship and I think it threw the calculations off so badly that he realized that either he needed to die or he needed to create some sort of event that, that creates like a rallying cry for the foundation. Um, the reasons why I think he may not be dead are there's the little thing on the back of his ear. Yeah. That was a little weird. Yep. And maybe they're cloning him or, or something. Um, at the same time, he went down to get a shirt and he's like, I need the white shirt. And like white shirts show blood more, yeah. right? Yep, yep. So like, I feel like that would, like it's maybe something where he needs to get her off of the ship and, you know, maybe he gives the knife so that she might relay this back to the empire or something that he's been killed. Uh, she, you know, here's the knife that killed him and they put Raish as this, you know, murderer and you know he's a martyr now martyr, um, yeah. Yeah. so he's creating the martyr event that that they thought would ignite kind of the, the series of events in the the formula right? right where he thought he was going to get killed and that was what was in that formula uh and that now that he wasn't killed rather than slowing the fall it actually speeds it up or something like that i don't know or it fails 
yeah i'm I'm curious to see what like where any sort of other cloning takes place and yeah. and, and how it really comes like into the effect of the show and, and the characters um i also don't want to lose jared harris in this show <laughs> so i i don't think you're too. going to uh and the reason why is uh when David S. Goyer pitched the series to Robin Asimov, who is Isaac Asimov's daughter, the one sentence pitch was, it's a 1000 year chess game between Harry Seldon and the empire. All the characters in between are the pawns, but some of the pawns over the course of the saga end up becoming Kings and Queens. So if Harry Seldon is playing a thousand year chess game between <laughs> himself and the empire, this particular one that we saw in these first two episodes might be dead, but he's going to be around in some way, shape, or form. He could have clones like the Empire does. I that would be kind of cool. So he or holograms is Palpatine? Or something. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> There's a bunch of pickled, pickled Harry Seldon's no, in a jar. No, you will die. Unlimited. <laughs> power power <laughs> unlimited exponential uh, power. so so does it be, does she become darth gale is that <laughs> <laughs> darth know, darth race no, it, it's it's a super intriguing way to end the yeah. like if you know you're releasing the first two yeah then like that that that's would be hook. the cliffhanger yeah. that's something that i thought about on. like if it was just like how would you guys uh, anyone watching too like uh, how would you guys have felt if we only got one episode i still think it i mean obviously i watched the next one um well yeah the the first uh, one has the space elevator getting destroyed yes right so, so it would still would have been like event. oh my god something huge yeah. however yeah. between harry getting killed uh the public executions the planets getting bombarded yeah all that stuff happening and being cross-cut and all happening right at the end I watched the first episode on Thursday night, the second episode on Friday. And then as soon as it was done, I like put my, my head in my hands and I was like, I have to wait a week yeah. for the next one. Like I was like, I want it like right yeah. now. Yep. So I think that was a very smart move on Apple's part to, to do those two episodes in particular uh, yep. and then do the weekly drops after that. Yeah. It says like three episodes, but you're like, just kidding. Yeah. Was it was like, weird. Right. I thought it was going to be three and it was only two. Yeah. Yeah. They fooled us. Yeah. But no, it's I, fine. It's more videos for us to make. So. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> Subscribe. So I, I found it interesting that, so I looked on Rotten Tomatoes. Critics are giving it about 70%, um, which. Really? Yeah. So I, so I'm not sure. Fucking idiots. I, I can't God. tell how much of the season that each of these critics has seen. It seems like some of them have seen the entire season. Yes. And some of them have only seen the first two episodes. Mm -hmm. um, so some of the critiques that I saw on there were lack of an emotional core. I kind of get that. I, I don't particularly love Gail as a character, or, but I, I think she's functional. I, I don't think she's and a bad character. You also only I, had about 45 minutes with her. Right. It's and, not really a lot of time to tell. Right. Her. And I wonder how much it goes forward. Um, but mm. looking back, like, do we really get a bunch of, uh, aside from Tyrion Lannister, and, and Game of Thrones. Like, did we get a lot of like hardcore emotional characters? I, I don't, I mean, I'm a big proponent of character, but if it's a chess game type of approach, then sometimes it's okay to have the characters be more plot focused and less, you know, familial character focused. Um, yeah. So I'm not sure. Some of them said there's no humor. I don't give a shit. Um, <laughs> it's not that type what? of show. I it's, yeah. it's fine. <laughs> yeah, it's the same people complaining that the Dark Knight has no, you know, kooky action or something like that. It's stupid. Um, like it's okay for some things to be depressing, although like most TV shows nowadays are depressing. Um, the way it but, should be. Yeah, uh, I see a lot of complaints uh, on the audience side of things about it not holding true to the book. Talked about that earlier. Like they're gonna have to make changes <clears throat> yeah, uh, like, yeah nick it's... you're a big lord of the rings guy and even you can agree that like oh absolutely the books in their in that state could not be filmed and be interesting because not they're only... books yeah not only that <laughs> but like i mean the hobbit is one book not a trilogy yeah. and there were things that were created like like radagast the brown he's not in the hobbit 
like he he i think he's mentioned like in the untold tales or something like that like he does not have a pivotal part whatsoever in the hobbit the fact that he's in two of the or was it two or three of the movies like or all throughout all three right like is just extra stuff that we got for a movie because it's a movie yeah. uh, and trilogies like i mean there's stuff that we didn't get from uh from the book still so like even then there's stuff that got that got left out i mean it's and again i think when we whenever we get this lord of the rings um show from amazon like you bet your ass i'm probably going to be uh very critical as to what's being said but i'm also going to be very real with you, with everyone as we as we critique this as just like we're doing from the show there's the book material and then we're just looking at it from the from a, as a tv show plain and plain and simple plain and flat yep. like it's so I, look i i've been reading books for years I, mean, I had to do it for my fucking college degree like i understand it's hard to translate page to screen it it can't be done like look perfect example comic books yeah look at that I, shit I, like things <laughs> things are going to be different and yeah some... it's it's okay though and i get yeah. it look if you like I, I, star wars eu is another perfect example right like i mean eh, there's plenty of examples to be made here it's just like i i, I don't like um i don't want to be a hypocrite either but by saying like it sucks when things aren't translated from page to screen but at the same time the caveat is if it if you still tell a good story yep. if it if it makes sense and you could walk away going you know what they did a good job with this then wh why why harp on it why why shit all over it and be like it's it sucks ass because they didn't do it exactly as it is in the book like yeah. like and it's i think we're gonna see a lot of that with foundation because foundation's not a very action heavy uh like type of like hollywood type of story it's a very analytical deep sci-fi type of story and fortunately that doesn't that doesn't set up narratively how you would want to structure a show or movie. Does and not. so changes have to be made. Um, you know, plots have to be inserted in certain times to get you to certain points. But you can be sure that, you know, they are clearing most of these changes with the estate mm -hmm. um, of Isaac Asimov. Yeah, his daughter is and, the executive producer on the show. Yeah, like so. they, they are very much trying to stay true to the intent of the books, even if they can't translate it word for word. And how can you how can you go against the estate if like you're a fan going that's not that's not as <laughs> books like you've got the creator, <laughs> yeah. the creator of the damn trilogy, the books themselves, the pages and the pen themselves, the ink, saying we're good, yeah. Please continue. Yeah. Like I'm sorry. Are are you are you to? I mean, I know it's everyone's opinion, but it's like you know, from the creator themselves. Like if they're saying it's okay, why are you harping on it? Yeah, and, and I mean, it's not exactly him. However, true, true. Um, but the people they, that are in charge, I yes, guess. Yes, and they're approving things, saying things like, "This is how he would have wanted it." It's the and same. It's the same. Sorry cool to cut you off. That. It's the same no, way for for Lord of the Rings, though. Yeah. Right. Like they're yep. going through the Tolkien estate. Yep. You know what I mean? Like, and I'll I'll say this. Like, I mean, Christopher Tolkien, um, you know, J.R.R. Tolkien's son, was. Uh, there are some things that he was very much against. Um, uh, and I know there are parts of the story from the movies he he didn't really care for either because it wasn't um, it wasn't exactly how his father you know, wrote it. But at the same time, like everyone else is like, but it's so great and it is. But same thing, we'll probably have this conversation sometime in 2022 with Lord, uh, with Lord of the Rings. You know, um, I just might I might be the crazy one here going well, on this page. It says this. You know, that's when I mute you. Just hit the mute button. <laughs> that, that, up, that's that's when I go on a on a solo live stream and, and being like, anyone who wants to join the craziness that's about to ensue, come. Come to Isengard. <laughs> What's the song? The hobbits are going to Isengard. <laughs> They're taking the hobbits to Isengard. <laughs> oh, oh man. man. I, I think though, at, at the end of the day, because like there's a lot to digest from this, right? Absolutely. And there's going to be if I had to guess, a whole lot more. Um, yeah. So far, the ride has been very fun. We're literally in a time period where between September 24th and October 22nd, there are two sci-fi stories that were deemed unfilmable between this and Dune. 
And we're getting yeah. both of them, right? Yep. You're getting one as a very long, you know, serialized television show that if they do it the way they want to is going to go on for eight years. Yeah. And then Dune is supposed to be the most sprawling, epic cinematic experience since the original Lord of the Rings uh, Fellowship movie came out back in, what was that, 2001? Yeah. I think was when that came out. <laughs> like, sci-fi kids are eating good right now yeah. man like yeah. this is what a time to be alive if you're into this kind of stuff it's great <laughs> like, yeah. uh e- even if you're not super into the story or if you get a little bit lost in it like there were a few points like to be completely honest and transparent with you guys that part of me was like wait what did i miss but at the same time i was like holy fuck this is the most gorgeous television show yeah i've seen in a long time if ever yeah yeah so it- like just be there for the ride take it enjoy it enjoy it yeah exactly going back to that game of thrones comparison i can't like if you watch the first episode of game of thrones like you're totally lost there's so much going on um but like this is kind of the same thing where they throw so much at you so quickly and that it helped me watching them twice to kind of fully grasp it um but i expect a lot more of that but i I expect it to be a show that you can kind of watch back and, and piece together and they did a pretty good job with the world building and i mean i i really really enjoyed it yeah, yeah i think it's gonna be one of those shows where um not you have to watch it multiple times but but you can right mm-hmm. and in doing so it's uh and then watching videos like like we put out where we talk about what we've seen maybe the possibilities the explanations the theories the whatever right the breakdowns and yep um where do we think it's all going what it meant uh and again that kind of helps build upon what you've just seen in a in an episode in a season and then and then the entire series whenever it comes to an end um but yeah it's just, it's exciting like there are plenty of people who didn't read uh, a song of fire and ice you know i mean the first five books were out you know i knew that john snow was dead long before the first episode ever was ever yeah. uh, you know <laughs> streamed, uh, streamed on hbo so yeah. it's like you know to wait and still never actually never get the uh, the real um, story finished from from George George Martin Ooh. bastard. Um, <laughs> so you know he's gonna um, die before those books come out. Probably sad to say, but probably. Before we wrap up, I do want to give my theory. And I think that that seer priest was actually one of the people behind the space station attack. Oh, you think so? I, the, the one they, that was on Trenton that she went yes, to go see. the one right? on or, okay. Trent, Trentor, Trent, whatever, the whatever. planet. Yeah, Trent, um, yeah. I Not think he, he has a part to play that we don't fully realize yet. Because yeah. he was put in multiple important scenes and he showed up at the trial. Yep. Um, so I think he knows something that he's not letting on. Or maybe he's just, you know, sees everything. But I don't know. It, it seemed a little like his his role seemed out of place, if not for, you know, he's important. It was interesting though, cause um, uh, brother Dusk goes there and, and kind of questions him and wants mm-hmm. to say and learn more, but yep. there he's uh, the cyborg is like, we need to leave. Like it's I wonder unstable. If the cyborg's in on it too, a little bit. I, I was wondering like when, when she says the line, like, no, your race destroyed mine. I'm like, does she want to get revenge to a certain extent? Because that yeah. would really seem like the perfect opportunity to get a, a hundred million I killed. I, I don't know how cyborgs were created in this universe. If it's yeah. hard sci-fi, they would never do that. Because like the laws of robotics, like right. if you've seen iRobot, those are yep. based on like also actual, is it really? Yeah. I didn't yeah. realize that. Yeah. Gotcha. So yes, then it probably is the same laws of robotics in this in this series. So I, on one hand, like I, I don't think it would be that. Um, but she's also seems too important to be just a side kick butler character. Yeah, that's that's for sure. I'm really curious. We're, we'll see where um, her uh, her character leads throughout this season and the show and yeah. um, and the seer. Yeah, and he, boys, uh, we're we're 45 minutes in and we haven't even talked about the fact that there's another plot happening 35 years after the events of what we <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I was going to say the one thing that's very intriguing is is the vault <laughs> and what the hell the vault means what the hell is that I don't know <laughs> it's a big it's if, if anyone's ever played destiny out there like it looks exactly like it. <laughs> yeah like it's a triangle shape the triangles yeah. in destiny represent darkness 
Um, although I feel like it's more more like is like you know as they as the kids get closer to it in the very beginning, they see this like, like sort of radiating pulsing light coming from it, and that's when they're like, "I saw the ghost," and <laughs> I guess uh, uh, adult Gale right is like, "No, you saw me." Um, uh, no, no I don't a, think that's, that's a different, character. It's a different, different they, character. Oh, okay, I thought it was a, like a because she lands on yeah. Terminus. She does. It, but, it's a different. It's a different. Uh, her character. name is like Slovar or something like that. Oh, okay, I I thought it was her just Let's either see. existing or cloned or something like that. But uh, her name I, is Salvor. Hardy. Salvor. That's it. Salvor. 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 Oh, okay. Um. But either way, like, I, I'm I'm really intrigued to see what the hell the the vault means. Um. <laughs> and the knowledge because. That could be where we see more of Jared Harris if his physical yeah. form is actually. Dead. I wonder if that's like they they uploaded Jared Harris. His, his oh, and he's like an AI or something. <laughs> yeah. Yo, yeah. I'd be all for that. That'd be cool as hell. Yeah. So, I don't know. Yeah. It's a it, it's going to be a wild ride, and I, I hope that uh, it does well enough to warrant multiple yeah. seasons. I uh, hope so Apple too. Apple has greenlit almost every single show they've made for a second season even if it didn't do too well yeah uh so i think this has a good chance of getting at least a second or third season so yeah. uh hopefully enough people watch it that we get the full story as they they want to tell it because i'm like super duper duper on board with it yeah and this could be like a game of thrones thing where the first couple seasons of game of thrones weren't that big um like it it really took word of mouth to kind of cause it to take off and the red wedding and then it just you know yeah it wasn't until like crazy. season three or four where everyone like was really like, like really doing, doing his watch parties yep. and yep. stuff like that like you know like, unless you knew people that read the books like i would call like my best friend about it and be like you know talking about the episodes in the first season you know who would have really made the best um you know king uh, to sit on the throne which would have been sean bean but um Ned Stark would have made the best king, but um, uh, that's why you got to kill him off the first season and book. Oh, shock and awe, man. Thanks, that's George. But that stuff does. So, um, I I don't know how to rate this. I really I was gonna don't. say, do we, we want to rate it? Should we? Like, uh, I'll rate it higher than the critics because um, I think they're all stupid and and inaccurate, and, and I don't give a shit about their opinion. Uh, I care about everyone else's opinion that, that's watching this stuff because I feel like you're more sensible than a lot of these critics. But I'll give it an eight. Deep breath. Wow. Uh, yeah, I, I think I'm going to go 8.5. Uh, it hooked me. Yeah, I'm, I'm very interested. Uh, I think there is definitely some room to grow. Uh, yeah. And there, yep. there was some stuff like the romance angle that kind of brought the beginning of the second episode down a little bit for me. And I was kind of yeah. like, all right, where, where are we going with this? But um, yeah. I think space. the concept is fascinating. I think it's a huge swing for, for Apple. Yeah. Uh, and hopefully it, it, it ends up paying off for them. And hopefully people are on board with the idea of something where, you know, they have to use their brain while they watch television. Uh, Imagine that strange concept for a lot of people. <laughs> I understand, but uh, I think it's really good. And it's an important show. Uh, Apple TV yes. is only what five bucks a month. It's like super cheap to well, the cheapest out there to have that. So uh, definitely recommend Shane. What about you? Uh, I'll go with an eight as well. I, if anything, like give these first two episodes a watch. Yeah. If you're not into it by then, you're. I don't think you're ever going to be into it. Right. Um, this this kind of is a good encapsulation of what you should expect from this show. If anything, watch it, even if you're not interested, just to marvel at how freaking beautiful mm. the production value is. This this is by far the best looking TV show I've ever seen in my life. It makes the Game of Thrones CGI look terrible. <laughs> um, it is seriously impressive that yeah. we're getting TV shows now with this type of CG. Yep. Absolutely. hundred percent. Well, I think, uh, since we're, we're coming in on the better part of an hour on this discussion, this is a good place for us to, to pull the brakes and, and put ourselves into a, a deep hyper sleep and try to wake up on Friday and have the third episode ready to watch. So, yeah. uh, like Nick said several times in this video, we would love to hear from you guys. So, uh, drop us a comment below. Let us know what you thought of these first two episodes. Where do you think it's going? What do you think about Jared Harris's character? Is he alive, dead? Is he AI? Is he a hologram? Uh, we will respond to every single comment that comes through. Uh, if you want to support the channel, you can do so absolutely for free. Just like this video, subscribe if you haven't already. Turn on your notifications. Share with your friends. Check us out on social media. We're on Twitter and Instagram at Real Heroes Show. Uh, check out our Ted Lasso videos. They release on Mondays. We had a really good one that came out yesterday. Uh, we will be back later today with a Midnight Mass full series review. Marvel's What If on Wednesday. 
Venom next weekend, more Ted Lasso, more Foundation, a uh, whole lot of stuff coming down the pipe that we're really excited for. So please yeah. stay tuned to all of those things and so, so, so much more. Until next time, we'll see you guys in the next video.